I, I, I was trying to prepare myself for that question. I knew that you were going to ask that question. And I think for a lot of media students, when you start to go through that transition to figure out who you are, you tend to say you're you're not like anybody else or you're you're different from everybody else but inspiration begats inspiration right so of course we we find inspiration in those who have touched us and i think for me you know as a black man growing up you know in chicago um just seeing you know the the levels that uh, michael jackson attained you know with his family um you know i, I that you know, he's a huge inspiration for me just because he, he symbolizes perfection. And all of us as human beings, you know, we're never satisfied with any product or project that we do. Every interview, if we're, you know, running, you know, we're not satisfied with our performance. And for me, I just always liked the way that he uh, executed and was able to flow through, you know, so many genres. And then outside of that, I mean, I have you know, George Michael, I mean, I don't know what to say about him. I, I completely love him. Uh, you know, Chance the Rapper, you know, who's here from Chicago, you know, I completely love him. Common. Um, I like a lot of older music, not to say that I don't appreciate Top 40, but these are some of the people who have definitely uh, inspired me in, in my artistic pursuits and have allowed me to kind of, perf you know, perform as the individual that I see myself as I am and not be afraid. And I think that's a positive message in, in these days and times to not be afraid of who you are. You know, we're always searching for some type of approval or acceptance, but in reality, the only approval and acceptance that we need is from ourselves. Did you get a record deal? No, I don't have a record deal. So I actually have my own label. Um, it's called Dwarf Planet Records. We're, we're here based in Chicago. Um, it's a label that I started with uh, one of my producers. His name is uh, Paul Murphy. He's actually kind of sitting off to the side over here. <laughs> um, so <laughs> she said, hello. Hello, hello. <laughs> um, we, you know, we've been work working, you know, working together, you know, for a long time. Uh, we've both been in the business, you know, for such a long time. And we just decided to kind of do it on our own. And I think the ability to be able to have as much control over who you are, I want to say that again, have as much control over who you are is very important. And not being able to, you know, sacrifice because when sometimes when you sign a major deal, you lose ownership of masters and other creative control and things like that. And again, for all of the media students, I want to say that complete ownership, you know, and not, you know, sacrificing who you are as important as you build your journeys to becoming who you are. How did you learn your Roman TV project roles? Was it hard for you? How, how did you learn them? Yeah, they were hard. I'm not going to lie. And sit here and say that, uh, you know, I got lucky and, uh, you know, found myself in these situations. Um, the casting business here, you know, in Chicago is very competitive. It's very, very competitive. Uh, sometimes there are auditions and sometimes there is an overall look that unfortunately we have to fit into in order to get a start. Sometimes you're passed over and sometimes you're not. And I really, you know, again, you know, like with, um, you know, the projects that we're doing, you know, persistence is always key. So, you know, I, I was able to kind of build off of, uh, you know, my portfolio of images that I have and just kind of send things out and about and hopefully get a response. And then if I got a response, you know, I'd go on an audition or a look-see and if they liked me, then they would cast me. And then there are other times, you know, as, you know, as a background actor, where, you know, they just look at you and they say, okay, you know what, you fit, you fit the look, you fit the mold, you can fit the attitude, let's put you in. And uh, I appreciate all of those, all of those opportunities, big and small. You know, for me, the most important thing is being able to walk around Chicago, you know, and, and have that ability to be normal, you know, and, and live and experience, you know, life, love, music and harmony. So. How did you in your portfolio was it enough to help you land your roles? I know that you were uh, you are a model as well but uh, at what point was your portfolio strong enough to help you land more jobs? Oh lord <laughs> oh. 
you know what? I can't say, Trudy. I'm being completely honest. I mean, I always think it's always about the work that you put in, you know, and, and, and just knowing, you know, what it is that you offer. But truthfully, I always say for anybody who is looking to get started in entertainment and media in general, you at least need a solid portfolio of, you know, 50 to 100 plus images to get your foot in the door. Not saying that we can't do these with, you know, iPhones and iPads these days, right? Because, you know, we're now in this age where we all want to have as many, you know, hands on the dial as possible. So the iPhones definitely work. The Androids definitely work. I would just encourage people to not use filters because we kind of want to have that natural beauty come through. <laughs> Casting directors are always looking for that natural beauty. Um, they don't want to see filters and, and things like that. They want people to be as natural as they are just to see where you fit into the rainbow kaleidoscope of things on the production side. That's very valuable advice. So you're saying that uh, it's a good idea to have 50 to 100 photos. So that means that in those photos, you are able to show more versatility. That, that was Absolutely, Trudy. Absolutely. And that and that's the key thing, you know, I, I feel like for me is being able to adapt without alienating. You know, we all have to be able to adapt with the current culture, right, of where we are. In order to grow, we have to adapt. So the more you're willing to adapt, the more opportunities will, will, will come for you. Flexibility is always key in this business. What is next for you? Well, what's next for us? We have, uh, we have Dwarf Planet Records that I mentioned that we're starting. So we are in the process of actually demoing other artists. Uh, for me, I'm just a very creative person, Trudy. I'm being very honest with you. You know, we've talked kind of off camera and, um, you know, I've just always liked, liked being creative and being able to uh, help other people explore their creativity unbound. <laughs> no, we're not signing anybody right now at the moment. We're just demoing artists right now for particular tracks that we have. And then if we like the way that their voice sounds with the track, we'll put it out. And we will most likely, you know how the business works, Trudy. <laughs> yes, yes. What advice do you have for aspiring media students who are don't be afraid to ask for help because you can't do everything on your own. Um, sometimes, again, with control, right? We all want creative control. We're not willing to be flexible and adapt. You know, don't think that you're so big that you can't reach out and ask somebody for help. Because I know personally for all of the things that I've been able to do, I know that I wouldn't be able to do them on my own. Um, you know, don't be afraid to reach out to, you know, a friend who may be strong, you know, in a marketing area that, you know, may be weak where you are. You know, some, you know, some of your colleagues may be sales professionals. So whatever it is, if your goal is to start a media company, you know, you need to have all of those elements in place. But one person cannot do that alone. And then you need to be able to work in unison for that, that common goal. So I guess that's my, my advice you know, because when we're young, it's always mine, 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 right? But as you grow into an adult, you know that in order to work and accomplish goals, that you must work, you know, cooperatively with the community around you in order to get where everyone should be, because it's not always just about you. So in other words, you're saying that not only should a student reach out for help, a student should also offer help and be cooperative with the Absolutely. Absolutely, Trudy, because this is such a big business and there is enough ground for everyone to express who they are. And that was the reason why I decided to start Dwarf Planet, because everybody has an individual story that deserves to be told. You know, my story is different from everyone else's, but I feel like collectively, you know, as human beings living, you know, in the political climate that we are, we all need, you know, an outlet to kind of express, you know, where we are socially uh, politically, you know, everywhere right now, so. At the Wizard, we assess the 
community for its order, quarterly issues, which is FCC mandated non entertainment programming. So, the three questions that we pose to community members uh, are the first about what do you care about the most? Oh, Trudy, again, you've. <laughs> You've you've taken the wind out of me again with your questioning. Um, there are so many issues right now. I feel like that are important to to Chicagoans and, and Illinoisans. You know, right now as as we're kind of going through this COVID nineteen epidemic. Um, but more importantly, I I feel like collectively again. I want to stress that collectively as as people. Um, you know, right now our nation is going through a very, very, very difficult time when it comes to policing and over policing and the military industrial complex here, you know, in our country. Um, I think we as a people need, especially, you know, our legislators who are passing these laws, we need to sit down and come up with uh, smarter ways to punish people for their crimes without uh, overflowing. Uh, you know, our prison systems with people who are, one, uh, intelligent, because, again, we are in a day and age, right, where we cannot judge books by its covers. You know, but my point is, is that we, we need to be focusing on trying to move that that issue, you know, further, you know, further along here in Chicago. You know, it's not just about black lives anymore. It's about, you know, uh, black lives, yellow lives, uh white lives. It's about everybody working in unison. You know, I am definitely standing behind, you know, Black Lives Matter, but I want everybody to know that we have to move together in unison together as people, because we are all children of God. There are a lot of people who don't want me to talk about that or are afraid. Uh, we all have our opinions and, and our beliefs, but I know that uh, only God could create a rainbow full of different colors, sherbets, and variations. And in order for life to be sweeter, you have to take a spoon, uh, and that's it. What is the problem that you feel should be, is the most important problem to be addressed long term? Long term, what I would like to see happen for Chicago, truthfully, is I would like us to get to a place where we are not pushing out individuals for the sake of growth and alienating people. Um, hopefully I don't come across as such an activist. <laughs> um, but these are things and issues that are very important. And we have to continue to remember that this country was founded and created by no one who is native to this country, which is why we, sh we should be more welcoming and accepting of other genders, races, sexes, uh, cultures, and just enough already. It's, it's 2020. You know, I really can't believe, Trudy, that, you know, in 2020, we're still, you know, having these issues and we're, we're, we're not anywhere, you know, closer uh, you know, for me, you know, as a as a black man, you know, who drives around in Chicago, you know, I have been, you know, stopped. I have been harassed uh, just because of the car that I drive, how I look. Um, and it would be great, you know, for us to, you know, finally move color uh, prejudices and racial profiling, uh, you know, away. And I would like all of our aldermen uh, you know, here to really sit down and start having these conversations collectively with all of the individual police stations throughout Chicago. And it's not a difficult conversation to have. I think people are just concerned about election year results. What problem needs to be resolved now? Now? What needs to be resolved? <laughs> I think what needs to be resolved now is November. I think November needs to come now. <laughs> I think November needs to come now. I think I, I'm just anxious for November to happen. Um, again, I, I sometimes a treaty, I, I get really scared when I get political because again, you don't want to alienate anybody, you know, but you're asking me these great questions. <laughs> and uh, I just think that, you know, we need to get to November. November is, 
Yeah, you know, and especially for, you know, all of the media students who are listening to this, you know, your voice is very important. I think that's been uh, talked about <laughs> so many times, you know, during during this program right now. You know, your voice is important. You know, I remember, you know, when I was 20 and 21, I always thought that, you know, my voice didn't count, you know, and in 2008, look what happened, you know, and that was something that we all did. We need all of the students, the students to come out and push this nation where it needs to go in the next 20 years. I'm not an old man yet, you know, I'm 29-ish. <laughs> <laughs> but but I want people to know that their voice is important. You know, agents of change and thought start in the smallest way. And again, don't be afraid to to be who you are and stand up for for what's true to you. And November is one of the ways that we can do that, not just on a national scale, but locally here as well. I encourage everybody to, you know, pay attention to who is on the ballot, uh who is running for alderman in your ward and uh, reach out to them with issues that are important to you. If, if, if nothing more about this beautiful century that we live in, Trudy, is that we have the ability to make things happen for ourselves and not wait for people to make them happen. And that's the power that youth have. That's the power that we have, you know, and, and we need to keep this, this positive momentum going towards November. And hopefully I haven't bored anybody. <laughs> I knew you were going to do that. Um, Killer is actually a very important song to me. Uh, originally, the song was uh, written by Seal. The track came out in yeah, 1989. I was a lad then, Trudy. I was a lad. <laughs> of course, I didn't listen to it then. But it's that's the great thing about music, right? It is always something that you know comes back to uh, find relevance, social relevance, you know. And um, when I heard it, I just knew that it was something that needed to be recorded. As you see, I've jumped voices there. <laughs> <laughs> I've jumped voices there. Um, but originally, no, seriously, it was recorded by George Michael uh, also as well. But it was written by Seal. And it is a song that basically talks about racial unity and harmony. And again, right, we're talking about social relevance. So I wanted to kind of do a track that I felt was appropriate for the social climate long before George Floyd happened. So uh, Killer is about you wanting to live your life and be free and walk into, you know, the liberation and, you know, what was promised to you by God, which is an, an unalienable right. So that's what Killer is about. Do you want to come over here, Paul? <laughs> <laughs> and this is Paul. This is this is the this is my business partner in Dwarf Planet Records here. He's an amazing producer. If anyone is looking for uh any work, um all to work with uh, a producer. Uh, Paul is your, your man here. <laughs> 